Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to Heart Centered Money Conversations. Laura Plahuti here and Kristen Maybe, financial coach. And we are very excited to be back for another episode where we are going to be talking all about the first time home buyers. So if you are somebody who is either you feel like it isn't really possible for you to be able to have that first mm -hmm. investment um, in your home, um, or you're somebody that is um, really wanting to just make the most out of the money that you have in making that possible to really be able to purchase your first home, then this is going to be an episode for you. And Kristen's going to go through the ins and outs of um, two kind of specific things, the home buyer's plan, as well as the newly available first home savings account. And stick around for this if you are wanting to purchase a property because there may be some little loopholes you can get to be able to utilize this account. Yeah. Um, so a little reminder that this is a series um, specifically for educational purposes only. So our whole intent with hosting this series is really to provide you. Um, likely you're here in Ontario, Canada. However, some of this um, today's will mostly be for um, Canada. However, a lot of the other episodes, you can take kind of things that we share and implement it into your mindset, into your way of thinking, mm -hmm. um, into whatever country you are in. However, for today, it is mainly around Ontario and Canada. Um, but it is just for educational purposes. And the whole point of this is so that you can really feel empowered in your decision making when it comes to your finances and your financial future and really being able to set yourself and your family up for financial success. So without further ado, um, we will invite Kristen in here to share more about um, everything that involves um, the first, uh, the home buyer's plan and the first home savings account. And um, some reminders from the previous episode, if you haven't caught the last episode, we chat, had a chat all about um, making the most out of your taxes, so your tax return. So the homework that we had shared, your actionable items were to actually do your taxes, because it is tax season, um, and also to adjust those contributions so you can really make the most out of the money that you are giving to the government and not overpaying them and really making the yeah. most out of your money. So without further ado, Kristen, I will let you take this away. Thank you so much for being here and just sharing all of your wisdom around these amazing um, plans and accounts and stuff so that we can make the most out of what we're doing. with our Yeah, lives. absolutely. I'm so excited to share about buying a house. We actually just bought our first home in the summer of 2023. So it's really exciting. It's all very fresh, top Ooh. of mind. And I needed to learn everything very quickly. <laughs> so I can get the most of it. And then I became an expert kind of around it. So I'm really excited because this episode actually feeds really well off of the last episode about taxes, because you might even be able to use your tax return to benefit from some of these programs as well. So we'll kind of dive into a little bit of that more. But as Laura mentioned, we're going to be covering two topics today. One is a new first home savings account. I say new, but it's coming up on a year <laughs> that it's been out. Uh, which is, it's such an exciting product. Uh, and the other one is the home buyer's plan, which some of you might be familiar with. It's been around literally as long as I know. I had a client I met with the other day and they said they used it 20 years ago. So, so it's been around for a while. So what I want to do is I really want to start with the first home savings account, the FHSA. So it's actually really tricky because it's called a first home savings account. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be your first home. <laughs> so maybe inappropriately named, but let's roll with it. So this account is for somebody who maybe it is their first house or you might be eligible for this account if you haven't owned a house in four years or longer, which is really exciting. Another thing to note is when you're becoming eligible for this, you want to make sure that your spouse is eligible as well if you're buying a house together. So say, for example, I was a first time home buyer, but Jesse owned a house only two years ago we wouldn't be eligible together because Jesse had owned a house. So something to keep in mind, got to know the rules around these things. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, 
people fall in the category that they're in the same category as their spouse, right? So that's kind of who this account is for. But I want to dive in like, what is this account all about? Why should I even consider this account? So this could be a really good option for you. Of course, you're going to do a little bit more research, but we really want to give you the basics in today's episode. And so what I like about the first home savings account, it's kind of like an RSP and a tax-free savings account. Had a baby. <laughs> if you need to know more about the RSP and tax-free savings, we did episodes about it before. So pause this video, go back and watch those <laughs> and reconvene here. They're down so, in the in the description below. So it's thank easy, you. Easy. <laughs> easy. Yeah, exactly. So what does that even mean? <laughs> right? So with the first home savings account, how do they combine these two accounts together, the RSP and the tax-free savings? Well, the first one is the RSP. So how it works is when you put money into the first home savings account, it's actually tax deductible. So you could put $8,000 a year and that would be tax deductible. And then, so basically you get a tax break or you get that money back the, over the um, over contribution uh, from your taxes, you get that back at the tax time, right? So May or so. And then how does the R, uh, TFSA portion come into it? Basically how that works is that when you pull the money out of the account, there's no taxes that you have to pay on it, which is really exciting because if you look at a traditional RSP, there's the tax deduction where you get money back because you put money into your uh, RSP. But when you take that money out come retirement, you have to pay taxes on it. And they're like, great, you have to pay us taxes on the growth on that money too. Thank you very much. <laughs> where in this account, there's no tax on the money you put in and no tax on the growth. So it can be a really great tool for that. So it's really the benefit um, on both sides of getting the deduction and the tax free of taking that money out. And you don't have to pay that money back, which is really exciting because the home buyer's plan, which we'll talk about next, you do have to pay back. So how much can you put into this account? I kind of alluded to this. So you could put $8,000 a year. But Laura, say you put $4,000 this year. Well, then next year you can do $8,000 plus the extra 4,000 that you had saved up from the contribution room from this year. So it's it accumulates over time, similar to a tax-free savings account or an RSP. So with your tax-free savings account, they grow your contribution limit every single year. And if you don't use it, that limit just continues to grow. Kind of the same idea. Mm -hmm. The one disadvantage to this account is if you don't open the account, you don't get that room. So I had clients like end of the year last year, the last week of the year, we're opening up these accounts, putting $25 in it because that allows us to get $7,975 that they can put extra in for this year. All we had to do was open up the account to get that contribution room. So even mm. if you're like, I don't know if I want to have this account, open it up and put $25 in it would be a suggestion, not advice, but consider it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there's, there's just a lot of value, but you don't want to miss out on that contribution room. And especially if you are younger starting out this program, it could be so valuable to you because you can put $8,000 in it now, let it grow for a period of time until you're ready to buy a house. And then you have so much more for your down payment. Mm -hmm. So all these different things to consider because it has the power of time. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, I'm buying a house next year, you're going to have money anyways. You can even take money from your tax-free savings account and put it into the first home savings account and then get that tax deduction, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So the money can be put in from different ways. And even if you're, you know, you have a long time until you're buying a house or you're buying a house, you know, next week, like th this could be something that you could use. Mm -hmm. Definitely so sounds like something that it's worth like, putting that money in. Cause even if it's not really in your plan right now, then at least you're setting yourself up for down the road. If you decide at some point your life changes, you know, like even for me, like I wasn't really planning on having another home here in Canada. You know, I was like so happy traveling and living my life. And then now I'm having the baby 
And now yeah. it's things I, I'm like, okay, Kristen, we need to set my this up for me because now who knows, I may want to have a property here in Canada where I'm living half here, half there, but that's something um, that I can utilize in the future instead absolutely. of just living abroad or doing whatever. Cause now I've got my family here with the baby coming. So it's a completely different situation that I never would have planned of on before. Right. Yeah. And life is always going to throw curveballs at you, right? Like, life, like <laughs> we never, we never know the plan. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just setting it up just to be in a spot where it gives you opportunities. Like you don't mm. want to miss out on opportunities just because we didn't know how life was going to go. Like we don't know the what ifs. You're never going to know the what ifs. And if you don't use this money that you put into the first home savings account for buying a house, you can take it out and put it into your RSP later down the road, right? So you can use it for retirement savings. The only difference is once it goes into your RSP, you're going to pay taxes when you take that money out, right? Could you take it from there and put it into your tax-free savings account? So it has to go into an RSP. Into an RSP, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you get the tax deduction, So they like, basically, you're just getting the tax deduction instead of getting it in the RSP, you're getting the tax deduction in the first home savings account. So they kind of keep those lined up together. Gotcha. Yeah, good question. So the other really cool thing is, and this is where the tax return comes in, is because you say you put $8,000 in there and it triggers a tax return because you now overpaid on your taxes, like we talked about in the last episode, then you can take that tax return Put it into your first home savings account. What does that do? Hopefully it triggers another tax deduction for next year. Or say you get your your tax return and it's $2,000. Well, now you can put $6,000 in there. Like $2,000, like free money, let's say for lack of better terms, (laughs) right? So it's really exciting how this can really benefit you and even just trigger that tax refund, which then you can put towards saving for a house. If, if that's what you choose to do with it. Mm-hmm. So a few different options there. That's super uh, do, do you have any other questions about the first home savings account, Laura? Um, I don't think so. I know before um, this episode, we were talking about potentially having it as an investment property and you had shared that you weren't 100% sure on the exact. However, it could potentially be something that if you still have it as your primary residence and you say rent out the basement, it could potentially still be something that you utilize in order to do that so that you have that income property kind of stuff coming in as well. Yeah, that's right. So you do have to intend to use it as a primary residence within a year. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're renting out a basement and you're living there, it's still your primary residence. Right. So uh, I think we're cool as well. So if anybody's kind of in that area where you're looking at having that investment income coming in as well Mm -hmm. as having it as your primary residence, it could still be something that you could leverage. So definitely um, look more into it for sure. Yeah, there's definitely options. Absolutely. So the next thing I want to talk about is the home buyer's plan. This is more old school, (laughs) but it's definitely worth still considering, even though this first home savings account is available. And basically the reason that they created the first home savings account in Canada is to try to make it easier for people to buy a home because we know the market is absolutely crazy, (laughs) right? Buying a house, seems like a dream. It seems like something that's not achievable, but this is a step that allows us to get a lot closer towards that goal. And so there's definitely options. Like we have been saving for a house for a while. And I literally, I was like, let's just like, our rent was very reasonable. (laughs) I was like, let's just invest the money we'd be spending on a house and invest it for, you know, the next 30 years or whatever that looks like. We would have had two a $2.2 million. I calculated. I'm like, we would probably be fine with <laughs> that amount, right? Yeah. But then circumstances change risk, kind of the same thing, life happened. And so we decided to buy a house. And so it was actually, we were in a better position than we anticipated. Mm-hmm. So definitely just run the numbers when it comes to um, what it looks like you're buying a house, because there's just so many variables. Yeah. And, and if when- you need help with, 
Go ahead. Sorry, no, you go ahead and then I'll chime in. Yeah. So I was just going to say, if you need help with that, getting a quote from a mortgage broker is also really valuable. I'm going to link my referral link for Rocket Mortgage in the comments. Um, I worked with Rocket Mortgage and they were just honestly so incredible. And they really helped us go through the steps, like every step of the way, told us exactly what we needed and kind of what our options were. So I, I'm going to share a little bit more about my story, but that's who we used. And, and sometimes it's just like running through it with somebody who can help you do that just makes the process a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I actually lost my train of thought, so I don't remember what I okay. was <laughs> Yeah, no um, worries. <laughs> if you want, can you prompt me on what you were talking about? Just like prior to, because you were sharing your story about it. Um, about that and yeah. the investment properties, but then I don't remember. I was just saying how you might be in a better position than you anticipate that you are. Uh, and it's all about just running the numbers to see right. where you are. That's what it was. Um, so how you were sharing how you didn't really have a plan um, to buy because you were going to invest. And I wanted to really bring that up because there is a lot of stuff, like there are certain um, other financial experts that say like, um, especially if you're going to be the, only, be the one only one living in your primary your residence presence. and paying your mortgage off instead of having somebody else paying your mortgage off. Sometimes it can actually be better if you just invest that money you yeah. rent, and then you actually make more money that way. So it's interesting because yeah. I remember I had, I think I had already got rid of my properties at that point And I was, um, I heard that and I was like, that kind of makes sense, especially if, um, you're not going to be having somebody say renting your basement to help you to pay off that mortgage that sometimes we can get in this like mindset of like, Oh, in order to be successful and be seen as somebody in the society over here that we need to have yeah. a house. Right. So a lot of the time yeah. we're going to talk about this on the next episode about our values really aligning with like yeah. our goals and stuff like that. But sometimes they can be borrowed goals where it's like, we've just been told all this time that that's a part of the plan if you're right. someone who makes it <laughs> right where it doesn't necessarily have to be. So really knowing if buying a home is truly something that you want, or you feel like you're kind of just, that's that next checkbox that you're like, it, yeah. this is just the next thing, or is it actually what's best for you? Yeah. I, I think that's so valuable to bring up. I literally had this conversation with a client. Uh, I think it was last week. And I'm like, it's okay if you don't want to buy a house or like yeah. life changed and now like you're going to rent because they're like when you run the numbers, it's all about the numbers and what makes the most sense for you. And mm -hmm. I think especially with like interest rates and housing prices and all these things, like maybe like because maybe it doesn't make sense. And part of the reason that I was like, let's not buy a house is like, I want to travel. I really want to do that and, and be away for months at a time. And I'm like, why pay a mortgage on a house where I'm not living in it, <laughs> yeah. right? There's a lot of different options and different variables. But um, at the time I was running the numbers and that's what made the most sense for us. And then yeah. life, life changed pretty quickly. But yeah. uh, now our goal is to rent out both like where we are now and our basement. And then we'll have the opportunity to travel, right? Yeah. So there's, you can always adjust your goals. And I'm really excited that we're going to talk about that in the next episode for sure. Mm -hmm. Me too. And so, so the next one I want to share about is the home buyer's plan. And so, like I mentioned, it's a little bit older of a program, but it can still be valuable. So basically, uh, it's the same kind of idea. It's, again, typically used for buying your first house or if you haven't owned a house for in four years or longer. Um, and you can take out $35,000 from your RSP. So what that means is that's per person. So if you and your spouse are both going to do it, you can take out $35,000 each for a total of $70,000 that you can put towards, say, your down payment, closing costs, all these different things, right? So you're basically borrowing your own money, though. And that's why I don't love this program as much personally, because you have to pay it back 
over a 15 year period. Mm -hmm. So you start paying it back in the sec in the second year after first taking out the money. I know that sounds confusing. So <laughs> if you take it out in 2024, you start paying it back in 2026. So that's kind of what it looks like. And you have a 15 year window. So if you don't pay it back equally amount, equal amounts throughout that time, say you're like, okay, well, I have 15 years. I'm going to wait 10 years and I'll do it all in the last five years. Well, you actually get charged taxes for those 10 years that you didn't put anything in. So you want to make sure that you're breaking it down to make sure you know how much money you should be putting away every single month so you don't have to work, worry about those tax implications as well. So how to, let's kind of break that down a little bit easier for somebody who maybe will use this kind of program. So if you take out $35,000 and you have 15 years to pay it back, I'll just tell you the secret. It's for $243 a month that you need to put it away, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you put $243 away, you're going to be fine. <laughs> so that's the numbers. If you want to know the math, reach out to me. <laughs> I'll go through it with you. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like, though, with the retirement savings plan, taking out the first home buyers. So it's basically a program inside of the account where the first home savings account, it's an account all on its own. So it's really important to kind of just look at to see what the options are, um, you know, because when you're taking money out of your RSP, say you have been saving for your retirement for, you know, since you were 18 years old and say you're 35, for example. Well, you've been saving for your retirement all this time. And now if all of a sudden you take out $35,000, you're going to lose the interest that you would have gained by leaving that money in there because that's a big chunk that you're taking out. So yes, you have that money available to you, but it might affect your retirement down the road because you have to now pay it back over the next 15 years. You're probably not going to pay it all back all at once. So right, right. we kind of talked a little bit about this in previous episodes about lump sums versus monthly contributions. So something to consider, because I think often when we think about these first, sorry, the home buyer's plan, we don't consider the loss of interest over that time period. Right, so, right. Uh, so it is kind of interesting. But if you know that that's kind of the purpose of your RSP, then you can do the same thing as like, when you get the tax deduction, put it in, then get another tax deduction, right? Kind of have that cycle, just like we talked about with the first home savings account. So there's a lot of different things to look out for. And so I really wanted to look at the retirement savings in, in another way too, is that you want to make sure that you know exactly how much money you need when you're taking that money out. So you don't necessarily have to worry about paying back as much as, as you like, as let me backtrack. <laughs> I want to say it's like, you want to make sure that you're taking out only the amount that you need. So you're basically not losing out on as much of that interest over that time period. And often what happens is when we take money out of our account, we're like, oh, I'm going to buy new couches. Or I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do this. And you're like, oh, that was supposed to be for retirement. My bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So so just a few things to consider. So th those are kind of the big differences between the first home savings account and the home buyer's plan. I personally feel the home savings account gives you a lot more flexibility and it doesn't restrict you in terms of the payments to pay it back. You know, it's meant specifically for buying a house. And then if you decide not to buy a house, you just put it into your RSP anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. So so huge advantages there. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share a little bit about our story in buying a house. Um, like I mentioned, we use Rocket Mortgage. I'll, I'll uh, put the link in the comments below there. But they really helped us out on everything that we need. We're both self-employed. So <laughs> there was a lot that we needed to do and a lot of paperwork and things like that. And they just like, made it really simple for us. But with the home savings account, the first home savings account, there's no restrictions on how long your money needs to be in that account um, yet. <laughs> they might change it down the road. So this is what we did. 
So basically, we knew that we needed the down payment for like Thursday or Friday, the end of the week. And this account like basically just opened up. So we put the money in, we opened the account on Sunday, which means it probably actually hit the account on Monday because it took time to process. And then we took the payment out on like Wednesday or Thursday. So we would have it in time for our down payment. So literally the money was only in there for a few days, but theoretically we'll still be able to get that tax return for this year because mm -hmm. we put that money in that it's tax deductible. So we still have yet to do our taxes. Uh, we're filming this <laughs> a little bit earlier than it's actually airing. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this airs, all our taxes will be done and I'll actually know. Maybe I'll throw it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. But it's really interesting that they don't have that restriction because like you can take money from your TFSA and then put it into your first home savings account, get the tax deduction, take that money out again almost immediately, and then you still benefit from the tax deduction uh, for that year that you, you're you doing that. So it's really interesting. So you have a lot of um, just possibilities around that. Really sounds like and, a game. And so uh, th that's basically all that I wanted to share. We also took a portion from our RSPs um, basically we took out as little as we needed to, to be able to do the whole house thing, the down payment and lawyer's fees and all the things. There's a lot of things that go around, um, buying a house. I literally, if I'm like, I'm throwing money everywhere. I don't even know where it's going. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really interesting experience, but that's just kind of what we did. And I just want to share our story because there's not necessarily one right answer. We used both products and you have that opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope that really gave everyone a lot of value around how these different products work. In terms of your homework or actionable items today, I want you to, if you're looking to buy a house or will be in the future, reach out to a mortgage agent and just get some information. I feel really lucky. I am surrounded by real estates and mortgage agents in my field of work. So like all the way leading up to the house, I like, I kind of knew exactly where we were at. And so um, reach out to somebody. Like I said, I'll put the link below if, if you're interested in reaching out to Rocket. Um, I'm here in Ontario but I think they do all of Canada. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then just do some research and see which account might work best for you. And maybe some of those details of like, if you're looking to invest, like buy a property to invest in, will this work for you? What are the restrictions? Okay. Do I need to live in it for one year? And then I can, you know, use it as a rental property. So do some research and then open up one of the accounts and just, run with it just start planning because if we just focus on like the what ifs we're never gonna we're just gonna hold ourselves back we don't want to miss out on the opportunities just because the unknowns because reality is is if you put your money in either one of these accounts like you're just going to be able to take it out later and maybe use it for retirement if it's an rsp you'll just pay some taxes on it but you won't uh, i don't i personally don't think that you'll regret starting to plan but again you don't know, you have to do the research on which account's going to be the most efficient for you. So that's kind of the homework. Talk to a mortgage agent, determine which account is best for you, and then take action. Just run with it. So Laura, I'm going to hand it off to you. Thank you so much for letting me share all of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, this is incredible. I wish that I had, I always say, like I say this on every episode, I wish I had this when I was first going through this. <laughs> Right. You know, we learn so much through experience, but um, no, it's incredible. So if anybody has any questions that are popping into their mind, feel free to throw them in the comments um, and Kristen can answer them for you. Um, if you want to book a call with her, the link is down in the description so that you can pop on there and ask your specific questions that you have for her. She's amazing. And um, that's great. I think that buying a home in general is such a big decision for people and yeah. really being able to know the ins and the outs, to be able to have that space, to be able to ask the questions, to be able to like feel safe, to sit with things and like mull through all of the emotions that come up and like, like 
what questions do I have? And then continue going and really not rushing that process. But then also being able to have that. I think I love that you really shared that tip about just opening up the account, putting 25 bucks into it. And then continue your decision making. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that way you're setting yourself up in that um, that long term game for whatever happens, because yeah. we know with financial stuff and I know from my own experience that sometimes we can get started in these processes and then we can have other things come up that distract us, deter us, and then we end up coming back to it a little bit later with that same intention. And then we can take continue taking action on it or maybe follow through on it. Yeah. But sometimes that process, the decision-making process can be elongated. So it definitely helps to be able to have somebody like Kristen um, to be able to um, not only hold you accountable, but provide you with the proper resources and education that you need to be able to make those empowered decisions and knowing what's best for you and your financial future. Um, and like I said, I really wish that I had this when I initially went through it. I feel like I, well, I definitely would have done things so much differently, um, mm-hmm. if I had slowed down the process of life <laughs> to, do, <laughs> to make these decisions. So thank you so much for being here and just sharing everything. Yeah. And I just wanted to add on that too, of just just believing in yourself and and what you're doing, because if we hadn't started saving for a house that like when life happened, we would have been not in the position to be where we are. And Mm -hmm. I don't even want to think about it. We would not be in a good position, you Mm -hmm. know? And so just planning. And even if life changes, like we were saving for a house and then we weren't, and then we bought a house. (laughs) Right. And so it's just, getting yourself set up so that way when life does come, which it will, you're going to be in a good spot and you have opportunities. Like we had the opportunity to say like, let's buy a house, right? So yeah, I absolutely love that you shared that. Yeah. And it's in this series as well that we're doing, like there's literally episodes for so many different topics. So definitely encouraging you if you're new to this series, check out down in the description below where we go through all of the different topics of each episode, because there's so much there guys. Oh my goodness. Like you can learn so much and really get yourself ahead just by listening to these episodes and really taking the time Mm -hmm. to sit down and listen to the information that's in it. And also asking the questions, right? Because we only know what we know from our experience and what Kristen's seen in her clients. So we're sharing that stuff, but your questions definitely help us to be able to tailor everything um, as mm-hmm. the episodes continue so we can really make it the most yeah. valuable for everybody because um, there's room at uh, room at the top for all of us <laughs> you yeah, know there's a lot of lack absolutely. of money in the world for all of us to be able to have in our own pockets so that we can live life comfortably and amazingly and um, really yeah. thrive in life so there's no need for anybody to be struggling um, financially mm-hmm. there's, there's ways around everything absolutely. and solutions for everything so Thank you yeah. for being here with us. If you're watching, we really appreciate you. And um, the next mm-hmm. episode is going to be more about the mindset piece around mm-hmm. it, understanding your values, how to realign your values to so that you can actually have the better follow through on your goals.